Okay, other cool ways of finding the limit. This is the dividing out technique. And first off, if you look at this, this is what uh, I think is going to be really cool for you if you take the time to start recognizing some patterns and, and, and accumulating some strategies here, is that what I would do often, if, if, they're get, if they gave me this, and they're like, what is the limit as x approaches negative 3? I see right now why x can't equal negative 3. I'm like, okay, this is going to give me a domain issue. It's going to the function is going to fail to exist here. However, if you if you actually plugged it in, you'd find out something uh, interesting. That is, you'd find out that f of negative 3 is equal to 0 over 0. And I get that that's as meaningless as anything over 0. But the fact that it's 0 over 0 should give you a clue. And th that clue is that because the numerator is also 0, the numerator and denominator have a common factor. So what do you think that common factor is? And that common factor, if we did a little bit of factoring here, we could find out we could just rewrite this. I'm just going to do a little rewrite. This is You're going to hear this from me over and over in calculus. If you want to be great at calculus, be a master of the rewrite. So I'm going to rewrite this thing, and I'm going to say that x squared plus x minus 6 is the same as x plus 3 times x minus 2. Isn't that right? all over x plus 3, right? And that's good math, I think, isn't it? And then what's going to happen is this. See, this, These cancel x plus 3 over x plus 3 is 1. So we have g of x is equal to x minus 2. Now we're just going to use direct substitution and hear me clearly. Uh, when you're taking limits, the first thing I would always try is ask yourself, can I use direct substitution? That is to say, can I just take f of that number? And if you can, you can save yourself some time. It's not, there's not always technique to be used. Sometimes the, the easiest answer is, well, frankly, the easiest answer, which is just direct substitution. So now I'm going to actually use that direct substitution, and I'm going to put in, right? I'm going to take the limit again. I'm going to take the limit as x approaches negative 3 of this mess, which is x minus 2, right? Because these are equivalent equations, right? And that's equal to negative 5. So there's our limit through direct substitution. Now, I, again, I guess I would say to you that if I was going to, if I had to graph this, I would make sure that I showed this thing. It would look, what does it look like? Look like Let me do this again. This thing looks like this. And if you don't want to see this, you can stop the video here. But I just want to make sure that I've said this, that... This function looks something like this. This function looks a little bit like this. This x minus 2 thing looks like this, doesn't it? Like that. There's x minus 2. And I guess what might be noteworthy uh, is here that I would actually, if, if I was asked to graph this, I would graph in a hole. Don't color this in, right? And say so this is the point negative 3, negative 5. Because in the function, that value just at that one point does fail to exist. So. Uh, f is undefined when x is equal to negative 3. All right? Okay, I think that was quick, and I think that was easy, and I think it's something that you should uh, kind of mark down. It's not something that I think you're going to be going over a ton in class, but nonetheless, um, you need to know these things because it's going to be in the application of this. And more than that, I think you're going to see questions like this on the multiple choice part of the AP exam.